Hello, this is Alan Rim Kaufman again with the third part of a recast of my talk from Namoa from last week. Uh, 45 ways to improve your web marketing batting average. We're about, well, we're on section three and we're in the middle of discussing some SEO points. So let's jump back to the presentation. And here we go. Titles. Titles matter tremendously amount in modern web marketing. Uh, titles, every page on your website should have a unique title. They should be compelling and short. Get your keywords in there. Get the keywords in there first on the left hand side. Let's look at the uh, home page for uh, the research page on Namoa.org. It says New England Mail Order Association, comma, Namoa, colon, industry research. The industry research, or better yet, with more keyword stuffing, how about catalog industry research or multi channel research, colon, Namoa? Put the most important words first. Don't put the branding first. Also, Titles matter tremendously in blogging, sometimes more than the post itself, sadly, and also in social media marketing. The uh, title under which your post is submitted to, say, Dig, uh, is tremendously important, and understanding how to write powerful headlines is key. It's interesting that a lot of these online marketers are rediscovering the techniques developed by the direct marketing envelope guys in the 20s. Uh, a favorite link here is Andy Hagen's Ultimate Guide to Link Baiting in Social Media. There's a quick link to get over there. Writing headlines that get read, writing headlines that get blog posts open, writing headlines that get dug, writing headlines that search engines like titles and headlines matter. Image search. Did I mention earlier that <clears throat> uh, Black Dog was one of the highest uh, search engine generating phrases to my site, sadly? not. I don't sell Black Dogs. I'm not a pet store. It's kind of unfortunate. It's this image right here. Again, I found this out through the Google Webmaster Tools, a pretty, pretty remarkable uh, application mentioned earlier in, the, in video number two. This image of a puppy, I spoke at a conference with uh, a couple of great panelists. One of them uh, had a client, the Black Dog, a wonderful restaurant on the vineyard, put in a picture to illustrate that post. And this actually is a page one result for Black Dog on Google and drives a tremendous amount of traffic to my site. Now, it's not qualified traffic, but the power of image search cannot be overlooked. If I was a retailer selling products, I would be sure that every single one of my product images was labeled not with an internal part number, not with a SKU, but with something meaningful like a product name, perhaps with a UPC, both with the name of the image, the actual JPEG image, the alt text, uh, the meta tags, and uh, the title tag on that image. Image search is a great, great, tremendous way to get traffic, particularly with Google uh, one one box results where image results sometimes are put on the top of the search pages. There may be phrases that you can't crack in natural search, but you could actually get very high on the page with an image search. Image search, check it out. Cascading style sheets. Oh, definite cowbell for cascading style sheets. And also, uh, uh, it's wonderful. It lets you reduce your markup. It lets you have a more standards compliance site. It lets you separate content from presentation. As you start moving into more advanced uh, web presentations using Ajax, consider rather than having an Ajax only site, consider using progressive enhancement in which JavaScript is run on the page render to add functionality to those folks that can support it. Rather than have a pure Ajax site, in some cases it must be pure Ajax, say Google Maps, there's no way to degrade that into anything. It just makes no sense without Ajax. But for an e-commerce site, it should run perfectly well with JavaScript uh, disabled. And, that, and for folks that do have JavaScript, progressively enhance the site on the fly. Wonderful book called Bulletproof Web Design by Dan Cederholm. Like that book, we'll give Dan a cowbell about how to do CSS and JavaScript intelligently. Okay, I have to mention affiliates. I'm no big fan of them. Uh, don't let the affiliates advertise on your brand. That's stupid. Don't give affiliates better offers. That's even more stupid. Kick out the bad actors and ask yourself, are affiliates even worth it at all? There are a small number of retailers that run affiliates already. For most folks, if you grab a random retailer out of a room, they would be more profitable and much happier if they simply killed their affiliates program outright. Enough said on affiliates. AdWords. Well, let's talk a little bit about AdWords. One of the businesses that my company offers is large-scale pay-per-click managers for retailers. What are the 101s of AdWords? You have to have tracking. I'm sorry to state something so basic, but still in 2008, some folks don't have it. You have to track the cost and sales at the keyword level for everything you do. Not tracking is like flying an airplane blindfolded. Never bid to position. That's just handing your checkbook over to Google. 
avoid broad match, really stay out of the content networks unless you know what you're doing, and separate your brand search from your non-brand. Your actual trademarked brand name will drive a tremendous amount of search profit sales in your program. That's all fine and good. You should advertise on your brand, go for it, but track it, report it, and bid it separately. You should be asking your in-house SEM team, you should be asking your, your outsourced SEM agency to grow the non-branded portion of your portfolio incrementally, profitably, and aggressively. Enough said. Big term list, deep, deep landing pages. Let's roll on from AdWords. Oh, this is a great idea. We're going to uh, give a cowbell out to the folks that uh, invented this. It came up on a lot of sites at once. Here we are on uh, Steve's wall, Paper and Blinds. He's doing it. Our good friends at Wine Enthusiast, they're doing it. What are they doing? The site looks at the tracking code coming into the site and presents it in a human, readable fashion to the browser. So at the bottom of Wine Enthusiast, it says, ordering by phone, use code GL2SPO8. If you come into Steve's Wallpaper and Blinds on the bottom, there's an EF code 790603. And these folks, when you call in on the phone, hey, thanks for calling Steve's Blinds and Wallpaper today. How can I help you? Like to buy some blinds. Great. How'd you hear about us? Saw you on the web. Awesome. Scroll to the bottom of the page and read me the code you see there next to the pound sign. This is tremendous. If you're a cataloger, if you have a way to capture a key code on the order, have your website reveal to the user in a discreet bottom of the page way what brought them to the site. This is this is a hundred million dollar idea and it's free. This is a huge, huge, huge idea. How are your terms that you're paying money for to advertise online through paid search? How are your emails? How are your banners? Whatever you're doing online, they're generating sales in your call center. If you have a way to snap a tracking code onto an order, please, please, please do it. My good friend Kevin Hillstrom at MindThatData.com, he has a, a wonderful book, another yellow book. How come all the books are yellow today? Called Multi-Channel Forensics. And he says the number one thing that catalogers or direct marketers should be doing on the line is extending their recency, frequency, monetary value model or segmentation to include C. Go from RFM to RFMC, where C is the last purchase channel, call center, web, mail, or phone. If you don't know what RFM is, then RFMC won't get you excited, but it's a big deal if you're already using RFM. Tremendously powerful. Kevin says, and I agree with him, you're probably overmailing your catalog and you're probably giving your catalog too much credit. Again, here's a blogger I like. I think he writes wise stuff. Check out Kevin at mindthatdata.com. <laughs> Cowbell for Kevin. Thank you, page offers. Come on, load, load, page. There we go. Uh, catalogers have long known that the most powerful catalog in the industry is the catalog that goes in the box. Going back to the RFM, these are recency equals zero. These are books that hit at the moment of purchase, and they're the most powerful books in the industry. So the same thing holds for thank you pages. Someone has just finished an order, they're still employed, their credit card is still good, uh, they haven't moved or died, and they like your brand, they're in a good mood, they're spending. Make them a strong offer on the thank you page and you'll be surprised at how well these things work. Video. Well, let's break at this point for the next part of our series. This is Alan Rim Kaufman. Tune in for the next part.